we're continuing to work with the idea of fabric wrapped around forms. And now we're going to work on a sphere. So I'm going to draw, um, have a about a six or seven inch diameter foam sphere that I've dropped some fabric around. I'm going to use that as a, as a demo. And this is kind of a great thing like for practice. It could be applicable to you know, drawing fabric around a shoulder and so on. So I think it's a good thing to practice. Remember, we're also working with tone, right? So before I even get started, I can, I can work very simply and put my white, black, light gray, dark gray. When I say black, gray, dark gray, it doesn't matter like what color of, of uh, chalk, charcoal, or pencil, or, or ink you're using. It's just a matter of getting these values established, right? So basically you have your absolute light, your absolute dark, and your 25% and 75% value. So you make basically a little mini value scale. And throughout the process, you're just going to basically refer to this and um, when you put a value down, it should match one of these four values. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hit a few um, hit a few points. I've got my sphere uh, basically gestured out. So now I need to find some landmark points on the sphere where the fabric begins. And when I go with fabric, I'm going to exaggerate that motion and try to find big areas where this fabric kind of comes off. And I don't want to pull any of the folds off the outer, absolute outer edge of the sphere. I want to pull them uh, from either inside or outside so that everything can kind of make a little bit more sense and I can emphasize overlap. Um, I've noticed that these are kind of coming, these folds are kind of coming in an, a vague ellipse around there. And if I want to just faintly sketch that ellipse in, I I can, that'll work out really well. Got this kind of scoop coming in and down. And then on the, over the back, I've got one that kind of comes up from the edge and goes back and around and down. So I'll be sure to, to bring that and do some perspective there. And I've got one that starts kind of over here and comes out. And I've got a whole mass of folds back here. So that basically gives me more or less what I'm after. Um, so now I kind of have this pile of fabric surrounding a sphere, and uh, that's going to work out okay. So what I want to do is basically take opportunities to squint at the sphere and try to find some areas where I need to separate out the value. Um, and I can do this kind of in a, in a planar analysis way too, because this fabric is kind of taking the sphere and making it more um, less rounded and more planar. So there's a section of fabric here that kind of tucks in this way right here. And so that is going to be my three quarter tone starting from about here and coming down through to about here. All right. So I can start with my quarter tone and go to the three quarter. And I can keep referring over looking back to my little mini value scale and matching this tone, right? So I need to go just a little darker. Cool. 
Then I can come in here and most of this area, there's a, a thin strip of light that this bit of fabric is catching, but most of this area, roughly in this shape, is actually going to be in this um, quarter tone. So again, I'm just looking for large areas of value that I can block in. And this kind of blocking in process is something that allows you to get to the immediate visual impact that you need to create something. Um, then there's a strip, a fairly thin thin strip along the other side of this edge of that same kind of quarter tone or similar. You know, when I get to, to the subtleties of it, it'll probably change. And then under this fold, there's a strip of three quarter tone about here. And then this whole area around it is going to be in my quarter tone. So then I need to just be sure that I push that three quarter tone down to where it should be. And then on this little curve of fabric, I need to do a little quarter tone with some reflected light under it. Then here, there's a, diff there's a definitive bend in the fabric here. And this is gonna wind up being probably somewhere between half tone and quarter tone, or in the end. But right now I see like a bunch of quarter tone up here. So I'm just gonna kind of treat all of these as basically the same and push it all to quarter tone. And then in here, I'm just going to do a little faint reminder that this is all kind of in shadow here. Okay. Then over here for this fold, this there's a faint strip of light here and then most of this is going to be back in that quarter tone as well. And then in this fold back here, kind of behind the back contour of the ball, this is actually probably going to be like a 50% tone between quarter tone and three quarter tone between the light gray and the dark gray. So I'm just going to go probably right to that a little bit darker than, than that one. And then I don't want to end the tone like right here, which is where it actually kind of ends as I see it. I'm going to overlap that tone just a little bit just to exaggerate it, make sure that um, I'm not creating any tangent points. Then I can work out into smaller areas, right? I've got a small area of quarter tone here. And behind this, I've got another sort of ridge of fabric that's happening here, overlapping. I've got a bunch of quarter tone there. Running right up to that edge. Then behind this edge, I've got a little bit of quarter tone. as the fabric kind of runs back in space. Got a little bit of tone to kind of make this fold bend up here. Now, what I can kind of do is, um, uh, I don't really want to necessarily spend a lot of time working into this because it's not going to help 
with the um, with the structure of the ball very much. But I want to go back and use what I know about line work, remember, which is variety, right? In line work, I have everything from sharp faint lines to sharp dark lines to wide faint lines to wide dark lines. So when I go into picking up contours, um, I want to be sure that I that I use all the tools at my disposal, right? And I don't want to do anything that's going to flatten um, flatten the image. You know, generally speaking, dark lines will pop forward, faint lines will go back, um, but you can get it to work um, depending on the the lighting situation in various ways. So I just want to be sure that I'm that I'm like doing some overlap work with these lines, right? So I'm going to come up to this line, kind of little faintly, and then make sure that I'm overlapping as I go back around this sphere, right? And I'm getting some contour that's going to work for me and not against me. And then this line kind of overlaps here, right? And I want this line to kind of pull in front of this shadow. And then I've got this line, which I want to pull in front of this dark mass area as well. And then this needs to pull in front of all of that, kind of become continuous. Now, in a fine art sense, like you might want to just define with tone, and that's possible too. So what I can do is I can pull some tone up against that line and uh, Kind of soften the transition between tones and I can now begin to um, work on those edges. I think the biggest thing about realistic drawing is that eventually it just becomes about how you handle, handle edges. Um, same with painting too. I want to probably create a, a value transition here as I work through, as I notice more and more detail, right? I probably want to push this into the, into the exactly 50% tone. Okay, and then I've got this area which has a nice little ridge here. It kind of softens up here so I'm not going to do much with it. And then this kind of like disappears into some tone as we kind of come up. So I'm going to de-emphasize that line, right? I'm going to pull tone right down here because I didn't notice that this tone went out quite as far as it did on my first go round. So I can kind of make that correction as I go. And then down here, I can kind of create some pinches and, and stuff that I didn't see on my first pass or didn't, um, or too detailed. So I can just make another pass through, and then I've got another kind of harsh contour here, which is very much blended into this um, into this shadow down here. So I can make sure that, that blends. Then I probably want to pull a quarter tone to be the reflected light, deepen up this um, this part of the shadow core here. It's going to make that reflected light work, and then kind of lose it as I come up here. And then I can kind of pick out some line work here that I see, right? I can soften up this shadow, make it kind of blend out as needed. And then under here where I've got this fabric, I can kind of push this down into some shadow. There. So I'm kind of getting 
this uh, this sphere to happen. And every time I take a pass through, I'm just gonna add more um, more things that I didn't really necessarily notice. Like this overlap, kind of it doesn't continue. This kind of overlaps here, so I'm gonna split those lines off and change them a little bit so that they do kind of emphasize a little more overlap. All right, I can change the shape of this shadow if I need to and progress into the piece further, right? Then I can clean up some of the overlap here. Like there's definitely this overlap that happens here and then comes around. And then this hits here and turns. And then this kind of comes around and hits. And then this kind of creates a turn, this overlap comes around, and so on. So a lot of this is about just um, noticing further detail and getting getting that to work. Um, and then, you know, ground shadows are always important. So, you know, grounding this out, finding some dark spots down here, creating some variety, maybe creating a quarter tone on this edge where it turns a little more slowly the fabric kind of rolls, potentially deepening up that contour, and so on. So when I squint at it, um, I kind of noticed that I really haven't gotten this sphere yet, you know, and I'm not working in an ideal light situation. So what I need to do at this point um, just kind of go back and get the sphere going. What I've kind of noticed is that the, like this area right here is kind of my highlight area. This is kind of like what's being, what's bright on the sphere. So what I can do is kind of, I can go back from what I know about spheres and then add in some details, right? I can start to say, well, I'm just gonna take like this whole area and turn this into quarter tone. Except for where these folds are kind of really pulling hard because what I want to do is um, go back and remember that the primary thing is the sphere it's not the fabric right I think that's the danger that you run into whenever you're wrapping fabric around objects is that you kind of get obsessed with fabric and how much fun that is to draw and then forget that Really what's going on is you need to draw the object. Um, and that's just a good reminder, you know, that that's probably going to happen. And so this is kind of how you fix it, right? So I've got this sort of thing masked out. So now what I need to do is just come back and say, well, this is really just fabric, right? And so even just doing that, I've kind of created this, this um, area I'm starting to see the sphere again. So now if I go back and I create a shadow core, you're really going to start to see a sphere, a sphere again, right? So if I do things like this, go into the half tone, you know, deepen up areas that are that are kind of part of that structure, but then go back and pay attention to that half tone again. And I can blend down and make this a smooth transition if I want. I'm going to create the sense that this area is going to be like reflected light on a sphere. And this fabric is truly wrapped around the sphere, right? So now I've got something that looks even more spherical, right? And I've got this like cast shadow of the sphere and I can just keep pushing, pushing cast shadows down, right? Go back and pay more attention to the uh, fabric again and bump the fabric back up. So what I can do is I can alternate my thought patterns too. I can go back from saying, well, I've lost the sphere. Um, so I bring back the sphere, but then in doing that, I've lost some fabric, so I need to come back and bring back some fabric, and that's all fine. And that's all fine to do. Um, it's part of just the back and forth. So um, there's this interesting stage where drawings 
tend to, and paintings too, they tend to get pushed back and forth between different states. And um, that's when a lot of the major decisions in the work happens. And that's when things um, can get really interesting um, in terms of being a creator, because you're starting to um, see how these decisions that you make begin to shape and, and see how your, your thought patterns begin to shape the um, shape the piece that you're working on. Because really this isn't about technique or anything at this point, it's about decision making, right? And I need to decide whether I want to kind of flatten out the sphere and um, get into these wrinkles and folds, or whether I want to um, flatten out the wrinkles and folds a little bit and get to the real nature of the sphere. And now I can start pushing values, right? So what I can start to do now is start, start to insert some values in between um, these. And I don't really have like a super dark value anywhere. There's some areas where I could put a, put a super dark value. Like right here, I see an absence of light. And there's a little bit under here. You know, maybe I could sneak one pretty dark down in this area. Maybe not to the actual absolute black. Pretty dark. There's a pretty dark area down under here, sneaking up. So this is the stage that I call pushing, right? So I've established value, but now I need to like take some of them and like push them deep down so that they begin to work. And then I need to take large areas sometimes too, and I need to push whole large areas down so that they begin to work as well, right? This area, because it has this fold, kind of like breaks away from the um, the the shadow core that I've established on the sphere. And I can do some things too, like I can work into the sphere and kind of um, work this quarter tone up a little further and kind of like transition to the shadow core a little differently. Shadow core is still right here, but this is kind of allowing me to make some changes to it. So now it's looking pretty spherical because you get this idea of the sphere and that the fabric tucks under a little bit, but then kind of comes back out and gets a little bit lighter and brighter. Um, so it's all starting to begin to come together. And then with more work and more context, like if I work in the background, kind of push things down, find some really dark areas too. I'll be able to get really far with this over time. Um, but I think you get the idea of kind of like how to set this up and where this is going at this point, you know? So again, it's one of those large to small things, right? Like I block in large areas and then on my second pass, I go and notice smaller areas. And now I'm down to noticing areas that are about the size of my initial little value scale or even smaller. Right. So it then becomes about subtlety.